Welcome back to State of the Game. Uh, Pete Pavacqua, CEO of the PGA of America, and here with Brian Catrick. And again, we are at the PGA of America headquarters here in Palm Beach Garden, Florida. And we are joined by really one of our great PGA of America professionals. And Brian, I've, I've talked to you about our strategic plan. <clears throat> and for our organization, it's all about growing the game and serving our members. And when we talked about what makes the PGA of America really, be, it is what it is, is, is that our PGA of America professionals are that tangible connection between the game and everybody that plays it. And they're the experts in teaching the game, playing the game, and the business of the game. And, you know, we're, we're truly honored to be joined here by one of our finest, a good friend, my coach, so he has the patience of Job, uh, Warren Bakke. Thanks for joining us, Warren. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Brian. Glad to be here. How does it feel to be on the same show as Tom Lehman and Davis Lund the third? Well, I feel really privileged. At, uh, w what a great day and, and a great announcement, and we're excited for all the news and what to come from the Ryder Cup. All right, here's, we, here's what we have to know. I've, I've got to ask him some questions here, Pete. Uh -uh. Uh, the man's the CEO of the PGA of America. We know his background in the game. He's been playing the game since he was a kid. As golfy as they come, what type of player is Pete Bavacqua? Oh, he's a good player. He's got a lot of tools. He brought a lot to the table. So I was really excited to see, A, he was an athlete. He had a lot of enthusiasm. And some of his, uh, you know, his uh, foundation uh, principles were a little bit off. So we went in there and just kind of retooled a few things. I mean, they were just laying dormant. They just needed to be kind of resurfaced and, uh, and get them proactive. Is it safe to say that I am not Ryder Cup material, or Not yet. You're, you're, you're still on the bench, but uh, that's not to say in 18 months you can't be in there. Uh, and, and, Brian, as you know, we're, we're, we have 41 sections of PGA of America. Warren is the, is the president of the South Florida PGA section, uh, which is obviously right here uh, in, in this area with us at headquarters. And, and, Warren, talk about some of the things. You had a great women's golf day recently. Obviously, you're so involved at teaching the game at every level, you know, not just at the amateur level, but you have so many LPGA students, you have some really, I think, one of the most exciting players in the PGA Tour in terms of potential. So I would love to hear a little bit about what you're doing in Florida to help run the PGA of America, and then really the very vast experience you have as a teacher. Well, we're real excited about getting the growth of the game back. I mean, we had a little uh, lull a couple years ago, and it was uh, important for us to try to get our face back on the map and try to go into some areas where, you know, maybe not so much the Golf Channel or, or the Golf Magazine, but into other venues where people haven't heard about us and uh, our venue was with women's golf and we just thought it was very important for us to get out there and show our face and let them know that they could be heard and to bring some new initiatives of uh you know of, of lessons and programs for them to be able to bring them into the game and, and kind of show them some some excitement to where the game of golf can go you just had a uh, women's golf day not too long ago. How'd that go? Good. It was our third annual uh, Abacoa Golf Club here in Jupiter, Florida, hosts it. And uh, we had uh, about 160 plus women. Uh, we had some demo clubs, demo companies out there to be able to showcase some of their new product. And uh, we had about 20 golf professionals from around the area that donated their time to give back. And it's just great to see that it's not so much about the MSR points. It's about their love for the game to be able to come back and partner with us and be able to give back. So it was real exciting. We had four different stations. Everybody rotated. And we did something different this year. We gave everybody a different arm color band so we could kind of get the groups you know, segregated a little bit so we would understand their talent level rather than just grouping 20 people together with an instructor. Some never touched a club. Others have been playing 20 years. So how would that be a good balance to be able to teach them? So it was great to be able to put them in different color codes and be able to talk to them at their level. And, you know, one of the things we talk about, Warren, in terms of growing the game, and, you know, we have what uh, we feel are great initiatives, Get Golf Ready, uh, Drive Chip and Putt in partnership with Augusta and the USJ and PGA Junior League Golf that we obviously feel very strongly about a team-based approach to the, growing the game for for children 13 and under uh, co-ed. But you know, the, the I think we're, one of the real hurdles we're up against is time, and not so much the time of a round will take four hours and 10 minutes or four hours and 15 minutes, but dealing with generations that are coming up that have less time than ever that have so many distractions, that are doing things in 30, 60, 90-minute segments, whether it's going to a yoga class or watching a movie on Netflix, reading the newspaper uh, on their tablet. 
how do you think golf needs to deal with the challenge of time? Well, it's very difficult. I know we've all talked about how can we kind of dovetail at that little area and where we put our face on the map to where we can meet some needs. And, you know, we found out that sometimes you just have to be proactive and productive. And an example would be we're having some tough times getting kids out on a Saturday morning for our junior camp. And as we did research with other clubs as well as other areas uh, in the area that, you know, there's so much lacrosse and and, and t-ball and soccer and and volleyball in the mornings we found out that from two to four on a saturday is, a, is an open area so rather than just giving up the ship and saying we can't do it everybody's too busy we had to find a downtime and once we've created that we found more people wanting to jump in and get involved in it so it's just trying to find where that niche is and where that person can be available and that's what we found out so, so go back you're giving a lesson 20 years ago mm -hmm. versus this morning. How's your approach different? Well, I think I've been teaching golf for 40 years. And has it changed? Yes. But, I mean, it's still the basic fundamentals. There's a lot of ground root things that you have to look for in people's swings and be able to bring those surface. And, uh, you know, I know the technology is there and so on, but I never want to lose the awareness of the student. And we see so much with the technology, with all the bells and whistles that we're seeing, some of the interaction between the communication between the student and the instructor is starting to vanish. And, and for me personally, I just want to be able to be engaged. It's all about communication, and it's all about building that relationship. Our guest is Warren Botke. He's the president of the South Florida section of the PGA of America. This week, the PGA of America and the PGA Tour come together for an event here at PGA National, the uh, Honda Classic. Uh, one of the stars, this guy you know very well, a guy you taught as a junior, and Brooks Kepka. Mm -hmm. How much fun has it been to watch him? Oh, it's been great. I mean, Brooks has been like a son to me. Uh, I had the opportunity. I've known the Kepka family for 30 years, and his dad is a three handicap. I've worked with him for various years, and when Brooks became about 11 or 12 years old, he handed him off to me, and he said, he's all yours. I've taken him as far as I can, and you do what you need to do. And it was really neat to be able to mold and give him some of the fundamentals and the foundation to take him where he is today. And uh, we worked together about almost six years, and he got a, a full ride at Florida State. And uh, one of the neat things that was neat to show him was I had him show him a little bit more about brand awareness. I gave him his first Titleist ball and his first Titleist hat, and today he's still a Titleist member. So I wanted him, you know, give him that opportunity to show him what a good manufacturer will do for him and how he was loyal to them and he stayed with them. One of the things that really uh, I find so comfortable when, when you and I, when you're watching me hit balls, is you seem to work with what the person has. It's, it, it, at least my perception, obviously you're the expert, but you, you don't teach a swing. Right. You teach, okay, what you might tell me to do is going to be different than what you tell Brian, which is different than when you tell a world-class player. Is that, is that something, has that always been a philosophy, kind of working with what you've been given and kind of maximizing that talent? Yeah, I think that's been a gift. I mean, it's just like a fingerprint. There's a lot of similarities, but no two are alike. And you have so many different people with deficiencies and positive attributes, and you got to kind of put them in a blender and be able to make a, a, the right cocktail for that individual. And it's just neat to be able to take an individual and mold them the way you can see that their possibilities are going to be there for them. All right, so with, with still a year and a half to go until the 2016 Ryder Cup, what does Pete need to do? Where, where, where are we, you know, what can we improve to get him on that team? He's probably going anyway. i got to be honest, i got a hunch that he's going to be in attendance. Well, when I, when I took Pete on as a student, I, I realized he's a busy guy. So the, the prescription and the injection I gave him was going to be long-lasting because I wasn't going to see him quite frequently. That's important for you to recognize Yes, that. it is. So, I mean, when I'm going to give somebody something to work on, are they going to have the time and the ability to be able to do it, or is it going to be something that has to be time released to where they can hang on to it? And then when it's just about over, then they'll come back, and he's about ready for a tune-up. Absolutely. Well, Warren, we can't thank you enough for joining us Uh you know, for all you do for the PGA of America, not only at the national level, but here in, in South Florida, it's, it's, it's just really, it's special, it's a privilege, and it's because of people like you that the PGA of America does the work it does. So thank you. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you reaching out. And like I said, I owe the PGA more than it owes me. I mean, they've given me a great opportunity the past 40 years to be involved and do things and meet great people, and that's what it's all about. So I'll continue to pioneer on.
And there's uh, about 28,000 of you that have that same attitude. It's what makes the organization so great. Warren Botke, the president of the South Florida section of the PGA of America. I'm going inside the brain of Pete Pavacqua when we come back. I've got Ryder Cup questions, and he's got Ryder Cup answers. It's State of the Game. We'll hear those when we come back. Did you start your